Testing, testing.
the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service, especially if you're visiting us today, um, if you are joining us here in the building, or if indeed you're joining us at home over the live stream. You are most welcome. Uh, you will have noticed that there are a few changes this morning, maybe not quite the way it used to be the last few Sundays, but um, it has happened like this, I believe, um, just a couple years back or there, thereabouts. So we celebrate communion today at the altar behind me. The choir is to, our, to my left. Um, but it also means, so this is what we're going to do on the third Sunday of the month, but on all other Sundays, we continue celebrating High Mass the way we're used to. And also from next week onwards, we will ask you to come forward once again to the high altar to receive communion there. You remember we had suspended that due to COVID reasons, but now we feel from next week onwards we can reintroduce that. And I sometimes think whatever we do, we are here to worship God together. It may look different from week to week, but it shouldn't matter because he is the same. So let us prepare our hearts as we say together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, thence the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
heavens and the earth to make us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your words and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Do please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took out of one of his ribs and closed up this place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall we call woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. <clears throat> Our second reading is from the book of Revelation. After this I looked, and there in heaven a door stood open. And the first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I, sh I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit. And there in heaven stood a throne, with one seated on the throne. And the one seated there looks like Jasper and Carnelian. And around the throne is, an em is a rainbow that looks like an emerald. Around the throne are 24 thrones. And seated on the thrones are 24 elders, dressed in white robes with golden crowns on their heads. 
Coming from the thrones are flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And in front of the throne burn seven flaming torches, which are the seven spirits of God. And in front of the throne there is something like a sea of glass, like crystal. Around the throne and on each side of the throne are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with a face like a human face, and the fourth living creature like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and inside. Day and night they sing without ceasing. Holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall before the ones who is seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, singing, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. For the word of the Lord. the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One day, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out. And while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A gale swept down on the lake, and the boat was filling with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, Who then is this? that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Jasper and Carnelian and Emeralds got a look in. 
not to mention, of course, living creatures resembling lions and oxen and eagles, <coughs> all with six wings and full of eyes in front and behind. I mean, goodness sake, what is this all about? And it's in the Bible. Are we supposed to take it <coughs> seriously? Well, that's the peculiar thing, isn't it? That's the most peculiar thing. It is in the Bible. It is in our holy Christian scripture. It is the inspired word of God. Or so we as Christians profess to believe. And therefore, surely, as Christians, we have got to take it seriously. But my goodness me, it's not easy, is it? Whoever wrote this stuff was setting us all a tucker, wasn't he? And that's why the very common, you know, the almost universal response is to steer clear of revelation. To see a very well clear and park it permanently in the too difficult trail. And for sermonizers not to touch it with a barge pole. So why have I decided that today is the day to wield that proverbial barge pole? Well, it's because some time ago, my ministry studies contained a module entitled The Bible in Context. And this included some study of Revelation. And a struggling bit, no, quite a lot. And somewhat in desperation, I decided to Google Revelation for Dummies. And something did actually come up that has helped me. And today, having been handed the relatively rare opportunity to say something about a reading from Revelation, I thought I would share it with you. What came up in response to my Google search was the introduction, well, the rest of it came up as well, but it's particularly the introduction that helped me to a study guide on Revelation intended for teenagers. Give the author a medal of it for sheer, unabashed bravery. So I'm unashamedly pitching a little bit here, but in shortened form, here's what that author's introduction said. Before exploring the book of Revelation, he said, we need to enter into a contract. We won't be able to interpret this book correctly or discover its message unless we follow some basic principles. And here they are. Don't worry, they're not too long. There are six of them. Number one, put aside our preconceived Lots of nonsense about this book circulates endlessly in the popular media. This can entirely cloud our judgment. Put all of it aside in order to take a fresh look at Revelation and be ready to listen to what the Lord wants to tell us. Number two. Prepare yourself to enter unknown territory. It's a strange world full of angels and trumpets and dragons and goodness and water. But when it was written, when Revelation was written, apocalyptic literature was a common genre. Its first readers would not have found it strange. They would have understood 
its message. And if we are to do so as well, then we need to familiarise ourselves with the job and to take its special features into consideration. Number three, don't take everything literally. A picture is worth a thousand words, and Revelation often uses picture language, thereby giving weight and emotion to its message. Sometimes we can pinpoint the individual symbols and translate them into what they are intended to represent. But we mustn't get bogged down in detail. The pictures in Revelation need to be appreciated as a whole in order to understand their significance. Number four. Consider the Old Testament. If Revelation is compared with Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, or Zechariah, it is extraordinary just how much they have in common. The author of Revelation continually picks up the same symbols, names, figures, and themes. There are many precious clues in the Old Testament as to how to understand Revelation and its picture language. Number five, just accept that you don't know when. Revelation is not a history book. However much we might like it, it is not possible to place all the events in Revelation in a time frame. As a whole, the text develops and leads us to the end of time. And the most important thing is to grasp the spiritual realities embedded in the narrative. And last of all, and most importantly, listen to God. God's Spirit inspired the author of Revelation, and we need to receive this book as being part of God's holy word addressed to us. If we do that, then despite the fact that there will be difficulties on our journey, Revelation can prove to be a great source of encouragement to us in life and faith. And you will now be very relieved that I'm not going to start talking about today's actual passage. How quite it is. Instead, I urge you to take it away, and if you have time, reread it in the light of the little six-point contract I have finished. Put aside preconceived ideas, prepare to enter unknown territory, don't take anything literally, consider the Old Testament Except that you don't know them. And most importantly, most importantly of all, listen to God. Give it a try. You never know. Revelation might start to speak to you when it has not come so before. Revelation reveals the true flow of history and the forces involved in it. In spite of appearances, Jesus Christ is the absolute master. He will crush Satan and his allies. His victory is sure. He will judge his enemies and make them his footstool. He will serve his people. And believers in him will participate in his final trial. Amen.
Thank you, Brian, for that very useful introduction to Revelation. And I hope we can take that challenge um, with us. Take um, what we have heard home with us. It was Revelation chapter 4, if you want to look it up. Read it again at home and see where you go with that. So let us now affirm our faith together in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit for our prayers of intercession. Let us pray for the peace of God in the church and in the world. Fill your church with the adoration of your glory, Lord, that we may worship you with reverence and wonder. Bless your people, giving them courage to hold fast in faith when the storms of life arise and when tensions manifest themselves between nations. Keep us firm in the faith with which you have blessed us helping us to find true peace in your world by our obedience to the commandment Jesus gave us to love one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, Heavenly Father, to honour all that you have created. Guide all people to live responsibly towards the natural world and grant that we may honour one another for the sake of your image in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our families, Lord, with obedience to follow your will. Open our eyes to see the signs of your glory in our daily lives, and help us to share your love with all whom we meet. Remembering those still suffering from the recent storms, we pray that relief and comfort will soon be at hand and that the gifts you have given may be strong in the members of the rescue services. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to you, Lord, all who live with illness or disability, physical and mental, and pray for them to be comforted and healed. May our government and its agencies, especially the National Health Service and all who work for the relief of suffering, be inspired by you in their vocations. May we all play a part in the ministries you have given us to carry out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have passed through the perils of this mortal life and are at peace in your care. With all those whose presence we miss, even though we still share love with them, we particularly bring before you 
the souls of Ronald Franklin Ratcliffe, once a choir boy in this church, and Julian Kelsey, a friend of many years. Grant them and all the faithful departed a share in the everlasting worship offered by the heavenly host. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand as we share the peace. To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising has set us free from sin and death. 
And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and singing. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. life help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth look with favor on your people gather us in your loving arms and bring us with mary the mother of god some peter and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through christ and with christ and in christ in the unity of the holy spirit all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Just a reminder that all are welcome to receive the elements. I'll be serving the service and the choir first, and then you will be asked to come forward. Um, if you'd rather just receive a blessing, do also please come forward, just not extending your hands out. We're serving communion in two kinds. You're very welcome to um, have both the wafer and the wine, but it's entirely up to you. Um, if you feel that's not appropriate, please just take the wafer um, and pass the chalice by. It is entirely up to everyone to decide what they would like to do.
Let us pray. God, our creator, by your gift, the tree of life was set at the heart of the earthly paradise and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we, who have been nourished at your table on earth, be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now may I ask you to stand to receive the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.